God is restoring Jerusalem, Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel, thus says the Lord who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Ju Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. In that day, says the Lord, I will strike every horse with confusion and its rider with madness. I will open my eyes on the house of Judah and I will strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength and the Lord of hosts their God. And that day I will make the governors of Judah like a fire pen in the woodpile and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left, but Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Jerusalem. So God is looking to the day of Jerusalem's full restoration, and he, he starts by drawing attention here to his power as the creator of the universe and then the creator of human beings. These are two of the great majesties, two of the great things that we should look at and say, yeah, yeah I think there's a God, not just an intelligence, a morally good benevolent, non-neutral. I mean, God is God is particularly aligned one way. God is not evil. God is good. And so God is love, the Bible tells us. He's the very representation of, of that. All who come up against Jerusalem are going to find they've bitten off more than they can chew. They're going to find that Jerusalem's like a heavy stone. Jerusalem is, is like a cup, a cup of wrath. Uh, we shouldn't have tangled with this. It's like getting into the hornet's nest. And so that's the picture that is shown here. The nations are going to come against God's people, think they're easy pickings, but in the end, when God is standing up for them, uh, they, it won't be a good day for them. They're going to find out that they, they should not have gone there and done that. And you know what? God is for his people. He's for his people even today. So everyone who comes up against Jerusalem, they're going to get crunched. In the battle, the horses will be spooked. There will be chaos. There will be mayhem. And God's people will triumph, and the enemies of God, and the enemies of Jerusalem, will be in big trouble. You know, there's long stretches of time when it kind of seems to us maybe like, well, God isn't doing anything, God's asleep, the Christians are asleep, and meanwhile, uh, bad things are kind of rampaging through the world. God is on his throne, and boy, when he stands up to, to intervene in the world, it'll be, it'll be absolutely crazy crystal clear. We're in biblical intervention mode. And you know, there are different times of inter intervention in the history, different ways to intervene with his people down through time. Certainly at the creation, that's a giant one. Another one that may come to your mind is the Exodus, how God delivered his people from bondage in Egypt. And you have the at removal from exile in Babylon, returning home. You have Jesus and the crucifixion at the cross. You have some things that happened with the Protestant Reformation and so on down through history. And in the book of Revelation, we also foresee some really intense interventions that are coming. A system of global con governmental control that will keep people, they won't be able to buy or sell unless they follow what the coercion that's coming down from the governments. We've never really seen a time when that was uh, clearly possible. But now in our day, the pieces are actually there. The machinery is being put in place even as we speak with these digital dollars and things that are coming at us very quickly. Yeah, we're in an interesting place and we know that there's a final giant intervention coming. Hey, where's your heart and my heart right now? Are we really on God's side? Are we just kind of plodding through life, just kind of uh, going as they direct us in the channel like a rat being directed through a maze? Or are we going to go ahead and go along with that and just kind of go until we get to the poisonous cheese at the end? Or, you know, are we going to trust in the God of heaven and earth? Zechariah 12, 1 to 6 shows that there comes a time when God rises up and stands up for his people and he intervenes and he brings things finally to fruition. And we want to be on the side of Jesus when we come to the final intervention. I pray that you and I are both moving, seeking that God will move our heart in his direction as we come toward that day. When God wants to intervene, hey, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in capital letters. It's going to be big. This is a really good day to be on top of your spiritual game. Mm -hmm.